and smoke. Brought to you by L&M Filter. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Hotter than sweet water, though. Sweet water? Texas? Fester? Uh, yeah, but I wasn't there very long. You weren't, huh? Mm-hmm. What'd you do there, Chester? Well, I was a salesman. Mm-hmm. Salesman? What'd you sell? Lightning rods. Oh, for that... Well, now, there are my good things here around, Mr. Jones. I remember Don't one time... Don't explain it to me, Chester, please. It's much too hot. All right, so... I'll go get us some beer. I don't think I want any beer. Well, then, uh, why don't you just go take a siesta, Mr. Jones? I'll stay here in the office. Well, why don't you just leave me alone for a little while, huh? All right. <laughs> Say, uh, Matt. Oh, hello, Doc. What is it? Well, I, I thought I ought to tell you. A couple of cowboys have been feeding their liquor over at the Long Branch. Well, that's what saloons are for, isn't it? Well, they were giving Kitty a bad time. Oh? She got rid of them, though, but they're down at the end of Front Street now, and they're making remarks and pestering the town ladies. It just might lead to trouble. Now, Doc, I'm not going to walk down there in this heat just to lecture a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. Well, I- I'll go, Mr. John. Oh, all right, Chester, you go. Just tell them to take it easy and leave the ladies alone, huh? Yes, sir, I will, Mr. John. down here, and... We... And we're going to send you right back, fella. <clears throat> Mr. Jones says you can have all the fun you like, but leave them ladies alone. That's a whole dang trouble with these Dodge ladies. They've been left alone too long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what they need is a couple of big-handed Texas men. Uh, look, now, uh, well, why don't you two go to the Lady Gay Saloon, and uh, I'll buy you both a beer. Oh, you will, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's mighty thoughty of you, mister. Yeah, well, we, we, we just don't want no trouble, that's all. Sure we don't, no, no. Uh, and I got me an idea how we won't have any. Now, we'll like it on my horse here. Hey, oh, you stay with our friend a minute, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> say, mister, you want to make a bet? What kind of bet? What, what do you mean? Any kind. You name it, go on. Yeah, but now I don't. I got it. Grab your horse, Jimmy. Yeah. 
Marshal. Uh, Marshal, they got Chester. What? Who got Chester? A couple of cowboys. They roped them and dragged them out of town. Which way? West. I'm going with you. Come on. Thank you. 
Maybe not, but you got two riders I need. How's that? What do you want, mister? This is the Crow Track outfit, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for a couple of your men called Stobo and Trevitt. They ain't here, mister. Now, where are they? Well, they come back this afternoon, picked up the gatherings, and they left. Didn't even wait to get paid off. And I'm telling you that just because they're no good, and I'm glad they're gone. Which way they go? I wouldn't tell you that if I knew, mister. I didn't think you would. Who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Well, that's so. Well, I don't know what you want him for, and I don't care, but just how you figuring to take him, Marshal? Don't put salt on our tails? <laughs> but you'll all at least carry a club if you're going after that Stobo. He's mean and he's big, besides being a Texan. <laughs> We've hung Texans up here before, mister. Marshal? Yeah. I heard Stobo and Trevitt say they was headed west, following the Arkansas. Where are you from, son? Texas, n- near Waco. And what are you sniveling around and forming on these men for? Well, that Stobo kicked me. He knocked me down and kicked me. All right, son. I'll ride along the Arkansas. But you ride back to Texas and learn how to fight your own battles. <laughs> I cut straight down to the Arkansas and followed it west. After an hour or two, I spotted a hobbled horse alone. Stubbo and Trevitt must have separated. I got down, followed the animal's tracks as best I could in the moonlight until I caught the dying coals of a campfire on the bank ahead. To one side, I could make out the huddled figure of a man asleep in his blanket. It took a long time to crawl to his head where I saw the weasel face of a man, Trevitt. His gun belt lay on the saddle blanket in easy reach. I stood up and I heaved it out into the river, and as Trevitt sat up with a snap, I kicked him back down. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! If you'll sit up again and I'll smash your skull. Don't Trevitt. kill me! Don't kill me! Shut up! Where's your rope? I told you to lie down. Now, where's your rope? Under my saddle there. You gonna lynch me? No. But you may hang legally if you live that long. All right, keep your arms in that blanket and lie still while I get you roped up here. Who are you, mister? Now, let's just say that I'm a good friend of the man you dragged out of Dodge this morning. Stobo was in on that, too. It it was his idea. He did it. Don't worry. I'll find Stobo. There. That'll do it. You ain't gonna leave me like this. No, Trevor, I'm going to throw you across my horse and tie you on. He'll take you into Dodge right to jail. When you get there, you tell Shiloh who you are, if he can still talk. He'll give you a nice, clean cell. You're the marshal. I'll be back when I find Stobo. Well, you can't do it, marshal. I'll die in that sun. A ride like that across the horde? No, no, listen. Stobo's about a mile upriver. We had a row, and I left him. See, I told you, marshal. Let me go now. Trevor, how'd you like to go to Dodge behind my horse with a rope around your heel? No, no, no. Don't, don't, Marshal. Don't kill me. Don't worry, Trevor. Killing's too good for you. I tied Trevor across my horse and started him off in the direction of Dodge, and then I forgot about him. Stobo was next. I rode west on Trevor's horse. Dawn was just breaking when I saw Stobo crouch behind a campfire cooking breakfast. His horse was saddled and stood nearby. I rode straight up, got down, and walked over. You lost, stranger? No, I'm not lost, Stobo. No tricks, mister. I don't see your gun, but no tricks. Relax, Stobo. I'm unarmed. Who are you? Matt Dillon and the U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. Well, you're a long way from Dodge, Marshal. Stobo, you and your pal had some fun with a friend of mine yesterday. You hurt him bad. Maybe you killed him. You rode out here without a gun to tell me that? You're the craziest Marshal I ever saw. I'm going to shoot you, Marshal, and bury you in the river. Now, what do you think of that? I expected you would. What? 
And unless you want it on your conscience that you refuse to feed a man on the trail, you better give me a piece of that pork first. <laughs> You're about the coolest man I ever saw, Marshal. Well, do I eat? Sure. Sure you do. <laughs> you just stand right there across the fire and don't move. I'll have to shoot you before you've been fed. I know. Too bad I only got one dish for your last meal, Marshal. A man can keep sassy on meat alone, Stubble. Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> well, it looks about done. At least this here piece is... All right, I've got your gun, Stubble, so don't try anything. Burn me. Burn me. Just a few coals. It won't hurt you. Now shut up and get on your horse. Now move. I'll kill you for this, Marshal. You can't hurt me like that. On your horse. Come on now. Get up there. Get up, get up there. Now you just sit there. I'm going to throw a noose around your neck, so keep your hands down. There. As soon as I get mounted, we're going to ride toward Dodge. And you do anything I don't like, and I'll jerk you off your horse and drag you the rest of the way. sure yet, but he's alive. Lock Stobo up. I'm going over to Doc's. Sure, Marshal. Chester was asleep, but Doc let me take a look at him. It seemed to me that he had more trouble breathing than before. Doc said another day he might see him out of it. And there was nothing I could do, so I went out for a steak and some sleep. The next morning, I went back to the jail. Morning, Marshal. Everything all right, Shiloh? Mm-hmm. Doc looked over your prisoners. Trevitt's pretty sick yet, but Stobo's all right. Got a few burns, is all. Nothing could hurt that moose. Well, a hanging, might. Sure. But what if Chester pulls through? You can't hold us in, Marshal. There's no law that says you... I don't like the sound of your voice, Trevitt. But you Be can't... quiet. Don't worry, Trevitt. There's nothing we can... You too, Stobo. Shut the door, Shiloh. I don't even want to look at him. You know, that uh, Stobo is a mean one, but I feel kind of sorry for Trevitt. Now, then why don't you go cry about it someplace else? I don't feel sorry. Now, don't you take it out on me, Marshal. I didn't send Chester off to do my job. I'm sorry, Shiloh. I... Why don't you go get some breakfast? I'll... I'll wait here now. I'll be back later. Pressure's off somewhere. Oh, he's going to be fine. Oh, that's good, good. That's good. Well, of course, you'll be in some pain for a while yet. Yeah. All right, Doc. I, I'll, I'll come see him in a little while. I'll tell him that. Okay. All right, come on, Trevor. Where to? I said. What's up, Marshal? I'll be back for you, Stobo. 
Get going, Travis. Trevor Stobo did it, not me. You can't do anything to me. Shut up. Trevor, your horse is down at the National. You go get on it. You turning me loose? You go get your horse and ride, and don't ever come back to Dodge, not while I'm alive. Now go on before I change my mind. Sure. Sure, I'll go. You're next, Stobo. What'd you do with Trevor? Put a knife on him? Turn him loose. Come on, get out of that cell. Am I free to? You will be in a little while. Marshal? Marshal, I, I just saw Doc, and he says it just... Hey, where are you going with Stobo? And he shoot me in the back, probably. That right, Marshal? I'm going to do what I should have done three days ago when I sent Chester after you. Bring him out back, Cheryl. Let's go, Stobo. Slow and easy now. Over here. You're going to drag me, is that it? Will you try that? That's what you'd do, isn't it, Stobo? But don't you try... Never mind. Here, Shiloh. Hello, my gun. Look, Marshal, <laughs> don't... <laughs> you're going to fight me. Well, Marshal, you're crazy and I thought... Why, I'll tell you, throw it out. If he wins, let him go, Shadow. Maybe I will. I said you'll let him go. All right, Marshal, all right. I guess this is your party. Come on, Marshal. I'll make it short for you. Real short. <laughs> you're big, Sobo. But you're stupid. You're ugly, stupid. Right. <laughs> Gun 
Smoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs>